To help us better understand some of the problems with our water, we've invited Ted Jones, a certified water specialist from Connecticut Incorporated. Ted, I'm glad that you're here. Thanks for having me. Because I have some questions for you. I see the water, and I'm hearing that there's stuff in the water, even dissolved rock, but I can't see anything. So how much could possibly be in here? It actually depends on how hard your water is. Uh, water's tested by a, a measurement called grains per gallon, a grain being kind of like a grain of wheat. Okay. So if you had five grains of dissolved rock in a gallon of water, mm -hmm. that would be approximately equivalent to one aspirin tablet. So there'd be this much material dissolved in a gallon of water. It yeah, it has nothing to do with the headache. It actually is <laughs> it, it's, it's a good way to, to show uh -huh. how much dissolved rock. So if you took that gallon of water, and boiled it and uh -huh. left the residue, that's uh -huh. what will be left in just one gallon of water. That doesn't seem that incredibly bad, you know. Well, let me explain how it works per day. The average person uses about 75 gallons of water per day. Mm -hmm. For a family of four, that's 300 gallons of water going throughout your entire house. So that dissolved stuff is going through your washer and your shower and uh, your dishwasher and all that stuff. Exactly. I mean, again, if, if you had five grains per gallon of hardness, mm -hmm and you had 300 gallons going throughout the entire house, okay. that means you'd have 300 aspirin tablets of dissolved rock going through that house every day. Wow. Through your washing machine, through uh -huh. the water heater, um, through your sinks, through your you know commode, showers, everywhere. That's uh -huh. just for five grains per gallon of hardness. Oh. But if we took 10 grains, now instead of 300 aspirin tablets, uh -huh. we doubled it, now you have 600 aspirin tablets of dissolved rock going throughout that entire house. Now here we're at 10 grains, let's go to 15 grains and stop there. Now you have 900 aspirin tablets of dissolved rock going throughout that entire house. And I can continue, continue, go. But that basically equates to 27,000 aspirin tablets per month. And that's what breaks down all of the water using appliances, your clothing. Uh -huh. You have to use extra soaps and extra detergents to try to combat this type of situation. We had very hard water and it was noticeable in our, uh, our wash, our clothing, uh, the whites were kind of dingy. There was always, a, even with the shower, by the time we come out, there would be a film of iron like on the tub. My shower fixture all used to get crusted with white stuff and looked really terrible. We got the kinetical system and uh, that's, that's all we need. We, uh, we, our water's clear and uh, we're, we really like it. With the kinetical system, the, the water is clear and pure. It just runs right off the walls of the shower stall and and there's no cleaning to it. So this is representative of what goes through a family's uh, pipes and plumbing every day, but how much damage could it do? Doesn't it mostly go down the drain? Some does go down the drain, John, but some of it f finds its place in the washing machines, water heater, pipes. In fact, I have a piece of plumbing right here. When the dissolved rock is heated up, mm -hmm. it comes out of solution and forms on the inside of the pipes. Yep. What that does is, as you can see here, is <laughs> it restricts the flow, the volume of flow That's through more, your household. More than half full of something. You've all of a sudden lost all of that water going through that pipe there. What else can it do? The other things are is you have a shower head uh -huh. and what takes place is the calcium magnesium gets in there and it locks into some of those orifices. Right. And have you ever taken a shower and all of a sudden the water's spraying in like seven Defin different Definitely, directions? yeah. That's what happens there. So that's the dissolved rock that's getting inside of there. And I imagine it gets in just about anything that has to do with plumbing in it your does. home. So. I mean here's a here's a faucet we took out of a home and you can see all of the spots oh, and, yeah. and all of the the stains from the calcium magnesium. And I imagine problems. it gets clogged up too. And uh, all of these items aren't cheap. Shower heads, plumbing, uh, fixtures, it's not cheap. It's mm -hmm. very expensive to replace. So by, by providing um, soft and water, conditioned water throughout the house, you can definitely save a lot of money there. Our clothes are better. The drinking water is super. The dishes are better. The, the tubs, the, the uh, uh, toilet, everything that we used to have a lot of problems with, that's now solved. It looks like we have a little science class going on here. One of the biggest issues is in our washing machine, mm -hmm. when we're talking about mixing soaps or detergents with the water. Okay. One of the things happen is, is when you take that dissolved rock and the soaps or detergents mix with it, it causes kind of a soap curd sometimes. Oh. To best illustrate that, I've taken two different types of water. This water is hard water, Okay. and this water is soft condition water. It means okay. it's been run through water softener. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take pure soap. 
When I say pure soap, it's a tincture of green soap, the same type of soap that they use in doctor's offices to wash out before surgery. Okay. It doesn't have phosphates, chelating agents, sequestering agents. It doesn't have any of those high intense chemicals to treat the water. Okay. What I want to do is I want to just take four drops. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four. And I'm just going to take that. Mm -hmm. I just want to sw slowly swirl those two different types of water. Geez, I can see something already. Uh, this one's all cloudy and this one's real clear. What if is you're going to take a hot bath tonight, let me ask you this. Okay. Which water would you prefer to bathe in? Uh, that looks like after the bath. I think I'd prefer this. Actually, it does. And a lot of times people get out of a bathtub and say, I didn't think I was that dirty. <laughs> yeah. You're actually not. It's, it's pretty much the soap shampoos reacting with the hardness causing that soap scum. I can actually see stuff floating around in there. That's, that's the soap scum there. Whereas oh. here, we've removed the problem, uh -huh. taken it away, so now the soap is just reacting with the water. It, it, is, it hasn't changed at all. It's, it's exactly, crystal clear. Yeah, it is. Now let me show you this. If I take both of them, mm -hmm. and if I shake them up at the same time... Well, it's a huge difference. I just put four drops in each one. Here, if you see that, Oh, man. And All look, of that dissolved rock <laughs> is reacting, causing that soap scum. Looks like a shower door. What that is is the friction. It's that, it's that aspirin tablet of dissolved rock I talked about earlier, uh -huh. that friction that adheres with the soap and leaves itself on the shower door, the shower curtain on all your fixtures. That's what's left behind sometimes when you around your sink because you have that soap there. Whereas here, that nice, soft, conditioned water mm -hmm. just sheets away. Wow. So not only can you use less soap, but you have a better uh, reaction and mm -hmm. a better uh, situation when you're finished with that. And you'd also uh, have a better bath, for you'd have, sure. Exactly. <laughs> now, let me show you this. I'll actually put in five, six, seven, eight, twice as much soap here, mm -hmm. and I'll shake this up. And you think you'd have a ton of suds because you right. have that many suds with four, uh -huh. but you still... About the same. You still don't... I'd have to dump a ton of soap in here to have the same type of... Soap suds is that. Obviously, it's not very efficient then. Well, and also look at the bottom. Which yeah. water is clearer there at the bottom, too? Well, it's still this. Yeah, mm -hmm. just makes sense. Okay. Let's say you have a wash rag you put in the washing machine. All right. You take it out, put it in the dryer, dry it. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to just take a little mason jar here. All right. I'm going to put the wash rag inside of here. I'm going to take some just soft water, which is cold, and I'm going to pour it on top of here. And I'm going to swirl it around here for a second. And I'm going to take this out. Now, this is just a freshly laundered washcloth. Okay. And I'm going to kind of squeegee it out here. Put this off to the side. Now, I'll close this. Now, first of all, that's a freshly laundered washcloth. And then when I do this... Now, how come that didn't rinse out? That is the amount of detergent trapped in that little washcloth. We have a saying that you can only get as clean as the water you use. Mm -hmm. So if you're using hard water, all of a sudden, again, that aspirin tablet to solve rock is reacting with the water and the soap and causes it to be trapped inside there. John, you're talking incredible savings when you take soft water. When you, when you take this type of water uh -huh. and you take the dissolved rock out of it and right. you soften it, you can see how your soap suds Crystal look better. Crystal clear, yeah. The water's better for your skin, better mm -hmm. for your hair, but it's also much better for your pocketbook. And why would that be? Well. Because you're removing the dissolved rock, so your soaps can react better with the softened water. And you don't have to dump as much in. Yeah. Here's, the, here's the Maytag answer book. So when it, you go buy a Maytag dishwasher washing machine, mm -hmm. this, is, this is where you go to. And Maytag, yeah. huge name. Has a nice reputation. Yep. And it says right here, a general recommendation is one teaspoon of detergent for each grain of water hardness. Uh, we went through that whole grain thing, so you'd have to use a lot more if you had hard water. If you had 10 grains of hard water, I'm just using that, mm -hmm. you'd have to have 10 teaspoons of, of detergent. Where soft water, they say a minimum of three. That's right. a 10 to 3 ratio. So that means not only is, are you buying less detergent, but it's also less detergent going down the drain, which is better for our environment. Right, and it's less to rinse out of clothing and, and, and the whole And for your wash machine, right. things like that. There's a number of articles. If you just look in the Sunday circulars in your newspaper, uh -huh. here's, here's lime scale remover. Here's X14 soap scum remover. <laughs> hard water heroes, the crust cutter and the everyday avenger. And my favorite, hard water champs for your toilet bowl. Ah, yeah. All of these cleaners 
and detergents are dedicated and predicated to doing one basic thing before they clean, and that is clean the water. Dishwasher detergent. Uh -huh. This is what you go put in your dishwasher, and we talked about earlier, three teaspoons with soft water, one teaspoon per grain of hardness for your water hardness. And right. again, you should have your water hardness checked. Mm -hmm. But the first ingredient in this dishwashing detergent is... Uh, let's see, my science will kick in. Sodium tripolyphosphate, which is in its water in, softener. It's a basic water softener. Yeah. First ingredient is water softener. They say that probably 50%, at least, of this dishwashing detergent is made up of water softeners. Amazing. Why do you think that is? Because they know that uh, the only way that the soap part of it's going to work is if the water has been conditioned. And if you try to use basic pure soap with this type of water, mm -hmm. do you think you like the results from your dishes and your clothes? Nah, I probably have eaten off something like that. You wouldn't be happy <clears> at all, <throat> No, you? not too good. We use a lot less detergent. Uh, the clothes are staying white. They're not turning that dingy gray. Detergent. I am, almost cut my probably my detergent consumption in half. Before the Kinetico system, uh, my shower stall was, it's a white shower stall, and it was brown. It always had this film on it and to clean the film off would require an hour or two with a scrub brush and two or three bottles of the scrubbing bubbles to get all the brown goop off of there. And then it never all completely went away. And then after I installed the Kinetico system and scrubbed my shower down once, it stayed white ever since. Ted, you know, you've convinced me that I want my water like this and not like this, but why a Kinetico water softener? Two engineers took a look at the industry in the early 1970s and said three things didn't make sense with a conventional water softener. Okay. All water softeners worked with electricity. Mm -hmm. Two is they had a single tank resin tank, so they had to clean themselves with this type of water, the not, incoming water. Not good. And third is they basically work on a timer method. Mm -hmm. It would regenerate or clean itself maybe every second, third, or fourth day based on time, not usage. Oh. So Bill Pryor and Jim Cooley designed the Kinetico non-electric twin tank demand operated system. Okay. No electricity, you've eliminated 75 to 85 percent of the problems of a water softener due to electricity. They have two resin tanks instead of one resin tank. Uh -huh. What that means is, is now when that system comes time to clean itself, it cleans itself with a softened water. Right. So that softened water goes through both tanks, making the tanks and the resin last longer and work better. And third of all, instead of it worked on a timer type situation, it works totally on demand. If you use water, it works. If you go away on vacation, for a week, it just sits there. The Kinetico system will never waste a pound of salt for a gallon of water not used, not ever. The one area we haven't touched on yet is the water we drink. And probably the most important water we use in the house. Yeah. Ironically, only 1% of the water we use is for our drinking and cooking, our life support water. Mm -hmm. So if you take the 300 gallons for a family of four, that's only three gallons per day. Not just for drinking, but also the, the water you make your ice cubes with, tea, coffee, orange juice. Uh, you might cook your pasta. Uh, Water your plants and feed your pets with it. Yeah. Uh, any weight maintenance program in America today, you step in the first day, they talk about, of course, later on what kind of food you should eat. It mm -hmm. should be a high protein or low protein. But the number one thing they talk about is eight, eight ounce glasses of water a day. Always. There's no doubt about it. Water metabolizes stored fat. It's calorie free. It's the best way to fill you up. The problem is, is a lot of people don't like to taste their water. Mm -hmm. When they don't like to taste their water, they end up drinking soft drinks, sugar drinks, sodas, things like that. You know, taste is important, but <clears throat> what I'm thinking about is, is my water safe? You know, that's a very difficult question to answer. You know, the United States probably, in, in the whole world, has the safest water of any country uh -huh. around. Uh, if you're on a well, you're basically in charge of treating that well. You're the only person there for the water plant operator to make sure that that, that water is meeting the standards that you want to have in your house. Mm -hmm. If you're on a city, cities inject chlorine as a disinfectant. They've been doing it since the early 1900s. It's super in the sense that it got rid of typhoid and cholera. Some things that were inherently bad at the time can right. cause a big problem. Mm -hmm. However, today, if you go to epa.gov, it's been linked to some types of cancers because it reacts with byproducts in the water. Mm -hmm. um, you see more and more arsenic in the water, boil water alerts. You see MTBE, which is the gasoline additive in there oh. that they try to do some things with. Right. So the, the basic, my, my thought is, is that I would prefer to have peace of mind by putting a, a drinking water system at the, right at my tap to ensure that it's reducing those things that are in the water that I don't want to have. John, it looks like tea time. One of my favorite... Oh, that's so nice. We could use a break. One of my favorite demonstrations is explaining the differences huh. between tea made with different types of water. Mm -hmm. This tea in the blue kettle is made with the very high quality Kinetico reverse osmosis water, mm -hmm. and this tea is made with the tap water. 
Let me get down here and check. Uh, they look kind of the same. Now what I'd like to do is just take some basic Lipton tea, mm -hmm. and I'm going to put it in here. All right. John, if you looked at the two different types of tea, which one looked richer and more full, full tasty? I think this one does. And why do you say that? It's darker. And actually, we've been conditioned the darker, like if you get a dark beer, it's, it's uh -huh. more robust. And, right. And uh, better like that. But I'm here to tell you that this actually is the stronger tea. Does what, it doesn't what, really seem possible. Well, here's what I want you to do. Okay. I want you to take the sniff test. I mm -hmm. want you to smell that tea first. Okay. And then smell that tea second. Tell me which tea had the more stronger tea smell. Okay. Wow. This smells more like tea. Now, let me take the tea bags out. Yikes. You got a little bit of a uh, little bit of a scum thing kind happening. Kind of a tea scum. It. Yeah. It's actually a reaction, if you want to hold that, it's actually a reaction with the TDS minerals and the tannins. Wow. This kind of left a funny aftertaste in my mouth. A lot of people say after they taste that, it's like they kind of want to go when the whole system was in just drinking a glass of water that has just zero taste. It's what water's supposed to be. It's just, it's great. The way, the, the way it tastes, whether you're making iced tea or using it to make ice cubes, it, it just enhances the flavor of what you're making. You don't have everything else in there. And the water tastes great. Our, like, for instance, our ice cubes in our ice maker are crystal clear now. They're not cloudy. Um, it's just the, the coffee tastes better even though I make it now, but, uh. <laughs> Here is an ice cube made with Connecticut reverse osmosis system. We're talking about making that to an extremely high quality water. Wow. Compared to this ice cube, which is made with a tap water. Now what happens is when ice is formed, oxygen forms in the middle. So in that Connecticut ice cube, I mean, on the outside, I always used to say, I usually say it's clear as diamonds almost. Right. I mean, what, what, what's funny is people sometimes will buy a bottle of water, mm -hmm. and they'll have an automatic ice maker, and then they'll have a drink, or they'll actually pour themselves a bottle of water, and they'll take an ice cube and put it into the drink. So what they've done is they've taken this ice cube, uh -huh. and they put it in there. <laughs> Does that make sense? It doesn't make sense to me. So when you're using you know, cleaner water, mm -hmm. your ice cubes, everything tastes better in your house. John, what I have in my hands here is a TDS meter. Mm -hmm. TDS stands for Total Dissolved Solids. That's uh, anything in the water that carries a charge, such things as calcium, magnesium, salts, iron, manganese. Uh, what happens is you have two little prongs here that measure the conductivity of the water. Right. Mm -hmm. What I want to do here is I actually want to measure our tap water first. Okay. And I'm going to put this in here. And that registers, actually it's going to stop at around 212. Okay. That's 212. TDS, and it's measured in parts per million. Okay. Now, what we do is when we run this through the reverse osmosis system, the Connecticut drinking water Now, you're system, rinsing that off and... Exactly. This is the very high-quality water. I always okay. want to rinse it off before I do the next test. All right. Thanks for bringing that up. That's Appreciate all right. That. But we run it through the reverse osmosis system. As I said before, we run it through that membrane, mm -hmm. and the bad water goes down the drain, and only the good water squeezed through. Okay. So now we're going to take this actual water, okay. which had 200-plus TDS, and we're going to run it through there, and now it measures... Wow. Seven. So we've taken 200 plus and brought it down to seven. Now, you might have thought it was going to bring it down to zero. And actually, it's, it's virtually impossible to purify water to zero, to infinity. But what we can do is significantly reduce the things in the water by 95 to 98 percent, mm -hmm. which gives us peace of mind. John, what I'd like to do here is test some of this bottled water that we have here. All we've right. Got in a local grocery store. And mm -hmm. I want to test it again for the TDS, All right. what we just tested our tap water and our Connecticut reverse osmosis drinking water with. I want to test the TDS not as it refers to the safety of water, but more for the taste and how it affects your tea and ice cubes. Okay. We showed earlier that the higher the TDS, the more that the tea is masked, the taste, and it doesn't smell as ice good. Ice cubes aren't clear. Ice cubes aren't as clear. Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this in each one here. Let's take a look here. And I'm going to take the first one, and the TDS measures 92. Hmm. And I'll clean that off. I'll be the cleaning guy here. The next one, this water tests at Ooh. in the 130s, about yeah. 132, 133. And I'll clean it off. This water tests at Whoa. over 300 
304 it's stopping at. I'm a little surprised, to tell you Well, that truth. actually tests higher than the, the tap water we had here. Yes, it did. So, this tests at over 70, about 71. Mm -hmm. And you can see that each one tests out differently, depending yes, it if does. it's coming from a spring water or from wherever it's coming. Yeah. And this one, here's a gallon where you can kind of fill it up at, at the place, tests at 89. So you can see a wide range of total dissolved solids in each bottle of water. And, but the biggest issue to me about bottled water is, mm -hmm. is if people are buying bottled water, I say good job because that shows you that, that water is important to you and right. drinking the 8-ounce eight, eight glasses of water a day is important to uh -huh. you. My issue is this is a huge inconvenience. Uh, a gallon of water weighs 8.33 pounds. I mean, if you bring home two gallons, it's like bringing home two bowling balls of water. <laughs> it's just a pain in the butt. Yeah. And the second issue is, is that people usually ration water. Um, typically, I'll ask somebody, do you use your water to cook your pasta with, mm -hmm. make your jello with, make your cake mixes? And they always say no because it's an inconvenience and it's extremely costly. What we prefer to do is put the kinetic reverse osmosis drinking water system right at the convenience of your own tap so you can use it for all the uses all the time and for pennies a day. I've saved a fortune just in not buying bottled water anymore for the drinking water system. I mean, I drink a lot of water and would probably buy a case of bottled water or more a week, and now I just go to the tap and turn it on and get a glass of water. We bought the Kinetico uh, water system uh, because we wanted to uh, not just soften the water but remove the chlorine, uh, work in the health field and you try to keep as many items that uh, could possibly compromise your health away from yourself. For now you can taste the water is cl it's clean, you, know, you, you feel like you're drinking pure water. In fact my neighbor comes over and the first thing he asks, do you mind if I have a drink of water? Ted, I've seen your product do a lot of things today, so many things, it makes me wonder, does this cost a lot of money? It's one of the best parts about the system, that actually the system will pay for itself as you use it. You think about all the bottled water, the savings in the plumbing, the washing machines, dishwasher, uh, clothes, soaps, detergents. You can save so much money that actually it will pay for itself. And also with the Kinetico system, it's one of the most effective and most efficient systems in the market today. So if you're comparing it against other brands, it uses a lot less regenerate, a lot less water. You don't have any electricity with the water softener. And the drinking water system comes with one of the longest and the best warranties on the market today. Well, I think the main only point to me was uh, uh, it was almost an install and forget uh, operation. Uh, very little maintenance to it. You have to keep an eye on your salt and you change a filter, I guess, occasionally. The uh, operation is simple and it is uh, environmentally friendly. There's not a waste of water like you have in other systems. Very reliable. It's uh, mechanical. There's no timers, no electricity, so it just it basically runs and takes care of itself. And all you have to do is make sure it's filled with salt when it needs to. We don't get a buildup of uh, material on the shower heads or the nozzles, the faucet, inside the hot water heater. I notice I don't have to scrub the tub anymore. There was always, a, even with the shower, by the time we come out, there would be a film of iron like on the tub. The amount of soap you want to put in the laundry is way lower than it is before. Uh, I don't use as much shampoo in the shower because that's the first thing I noticed is if you use the old amount you're just foaming all over the place. Everything works well with it and I, I love the system. It's worked very well for me. Ted, thank you very much for stopping by. It's been a real pleasure and I've learned a lot today. It was a pleasure sharing the information with you. For more information on anything you've seen in today's show, call your local Kinetico Quality Water Systems dealer.